thank you for joining us, or should I say digging in, to this month's Rocks and Minerals STEM session. We hope this interview motivates you to explore the topic on your own and try some of the activities in the free lesson plans and guides we've posted on the MySO page. Later in our feature interview, you'll hear from Tova Peltz, a geotechnical engineer who works for the Oregon Department of Transportation. Tova tells us she still relies on her Science Olympiad training every day. Write It, Do It taught her the basics of technical writing necessary for her project reports. While her ID skills and folders of notes from rocks and minerals come in handy when she's reviewing construction sites for highways and bridges. Speaking of infrastructure, you may have heard that lawmakers recently passed a bill to improve America's bridges, roads, railways, broadband, water, and energy systems. Experts say these projects will help ensure safe travel, as well as the efficient transport of goods across the country. Analysts from the American Society of Civil Engineers recently gave the nation's infrastructure system a C minus score. So there's no better time to get to work. 20% or 173,000 miles of our nation's highways and major roads are in poor condition, as are 45,000 bridges. This project will be the largest dedicated bridge investment since the construction of the interstate highway system, which started in the 1950s. It's time for an upgrade. All of these improvements need highly skilled workers, and lawmakers project that more than 2 million jobs per year will be added over the coming decade to complete these projects. Great news for all of you Science Olympiad participants who love to explore, design, build, and manufacture. Check out our workforce page on the Science Olympiad website to see how our events match up to the 16 CTE National Career Clusters. And check out all of the event pages. We've posted related careers and information at the bottom of each page. Now let's listen in as Tova shares some of her experiences with you. Happy Rocks and Minerals Month. Hi, Tova. Um, what do you do and what does that mean? Well, my, my official title is Project Delivery Manager. I work for the Oregon Department of Transportation in the, in, based in Portland, Oregon, um, in the, the greater metro, Portland metro area region of ODOT. And I am responsible for the design and construction of all of the federal aid transportation projects in the greater Portland area. So that's a four county area, about a billion dollars worth of projects, like roughly 150, 150 to 200 projects at a time. And a little over 200 people are on my team getting those projects delivered. And who introduced you to Science Olympiad? That is a good question. Um, my, I think that I was introduced through my earth science teacher. Uh, eighth grade was sub, like science subject, earth science, which I loved. And my earth science teacher, uh, I, in, like introduced introduced me to it. Or one of the other science teachers knew that I was really like interested in earth science in particular and suggested that I check it out. Which events did you like best? Um, my the events that I initially did was uh, rock, uh, rocks, minerals, and fossils, which is uh, a lot of uh, rock, mineral, and fossil identification. And so I did, I, I, that was the, like, the first of, like the first event, the event I was introduced to and what I sort of started doing initially. Um, I added, there was an, addition, an additional like earth science event that was sort of focused on earth science processes, I want to say, that was added a couple of years into, like once I'd been doing Science Olympiad for a couple of years, um, I also did, a, I want to say there was an event called like Write It, Build It, something along those lines that I also did um, once I was in high school. So I started Science Olympiad when I was in eighth grade and then participated through, um, through like through all the way through high school. So I think I ended up, that was what, uh, five years of Science Olympiad. Um, do you have any significant memories from your time in Science Olympiad? We actually went to nationals every year, like, every, like from Oregon, like qualified for nationals all five of those years. And so I like travel, like we got to travel every spring and like fundraise, like fundraise to go to nationals and then we'd make these trips. And so like all these different places that I went as a like middle school student and high school student, um, I'm trying to think uh, Kansas City and 
uh, Auburn, Alabama, and um, say Huntington, Indiana, uh, Tucson, Arizona, Colorado, and I'm blanking on where we went in Colorado. And I just like, I remember meeting kids from all over the country and that was like, I mean, that was that was really fun. It was also funny because in high school, I did a lot of speech and debate. So I did speech and debate, and I did Science Olympiad, and then sort of the juxtaposition of those two like social groups was kind of a trip. That's amazing. Those national tournaments sound incredible. Um, where did you go to college or graduate school and or graduate school, and what did you study? Um, I went to MIT as an undergrad, and I studied earth science, and and then um, and I started taking civil engineering, geotechnical engineering courses while I was an undergrad there. And ultimately then I went to UC Berkeley for my master's degree and have a master's in geotechnical engineering. I, I will say that like all that time, like learning rock mineral fossil identification for Science Olympiad, like those skills actually like came in very handy in like my mineralogy and petrology classes in college. Um, and I actually like, and, and then continued to come in handy, like as when I, like when I was like an engineering ge like as an engineering geologist and doing um, geotechnical engineering as a professional. And it's funny that like that thing that you do when you're 13, 14 years old uh, has like such a like like long lasting um, effect and impact. I still have I actually still have like my paper files with like all the notes and stuff that I wrote up because they continued to be helpful like all the way through college and then into my, like into work. Um, what does a typical day as a scientist look like for you? Well, my like my my career has taken like some funny like some fun like not detours per se, but like has has like has has um has has mo has moved around a bit. And like when I like first when I first started working like after graduate after college, I started working as a as a field geologist at a consulting firm in Oregon. And then after graduate school, I was working doing engineering geology and geotechnical engineering. And I was in the field all the time. And I was like doing like collect, like collecting soil, like collecting soil samples, doing a lot of like geotechnical, like geotechnical drilling, look at um, uh, subsurface conditions, collect soil samples and rock samples, and then do a lot of like testing in the lab to like, identify soil and rock properties that we would then use to design foundations for like all kinds of different structures. And so that was how I spent the first like 12 years of my career was doing that kind of work, um, both in the field, collecting samples, doing like doing lab testing to look at soil properties and then do it using those properties to develop um, designs, both for foundations and for um, like for uh, earthquake, res earthquake resiliency. Um, I also, and I also did a lot of like landslide mitigation work and rock fall mitigation work. So that was also like a lot of time spent in the field, um, mapping, mapping ground, like mapping land surfaces, identifying um, landslides, like like mapping like la landslide limits, and like looking at um, developing, and then going back into the office to like develop models for how landslide, like how we how we thought landslides were moving, like what was the, what was driving the landslides and then developing mitigation measures to like slow down the slides or stop the slides so we could protect roads or protect houses. And like the time that I was doing that, it was a lot of like, like field observations and, 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 and field data collection. And then um, like lab analysis to look at soil conditions and soil, soil and rock properties. And then model building to like, take, put that all together into like a model to just like to, uh, quantify what we think is happening on the like on the ground so that we can develop a mitigation to like protect whatever the like infrastructure is that we're trying to like, that we're trying to stabilize. Um, what's happened like over time, like I transitioned out of doing like traditional geotechnical engineering and engineering geology to managing construction like to managing construction projects where we were actually constructing mitigation measures or building like bridge foundations and then like more recently um, managing teams of scientists who were like doing all of that work. And I was working on the strategy of like resourcing the teams and pulling together like the right, like people with the right technical qualifications, scientists with the right technical qualifications to like do this, like to do that investigation themselves um, for many, many projects. And like now, like another level, like another layer up where I'm not just looking at like developing, like identifying the resources to do geo-oriented work on projects, but actually all of like all of the all of the different disciplinary designs. So putting together teams of traffic, like traffic, traffic analysts and um, roadway designers um, and engineers and bridge engineers and environmental geologists and biologists 
and wetland scientists and geol and geotechnical engineers. So we're building a whole interdisciplinary team to like deliver the whole like a whole project and not just like the geo element of the project. And and now I have like 200 projects that need to be resourced with like all of those different disciplines. So like over the last like 20 plus years of my career, like I went from being focused on a really like very specific part of projects like sort of zooming out over the years to like have a bigger picture and like now in my role I'm like more I'm, my responsibility is the like safe operations of our whole trans like, like state transportation system and so that pulls together like all of the resources and sort of all of the um thinking like thinking about how we spend our money to like how we invest our money to get the most out of it and to like best like best invest in like the transportation system um so it uh, like benefits the greatest number of people in like the most um equitable way and then the construction like the design strategy and construction strategy to see it deliver so it's a lot of stuff what excites you about your work oh i mean in case it wasn't obvious like i'm just like really I, I, I love public infrastructure. I mean, I think public infrastructure is, is like amazing. It's interesting. It's like you see the like benefits of the work on a daily basis. I mean, public transportation is a system that everybody's using. I mean, every like every day to get around and like that's, like, it's, it's exhilarating. I mean, it's, I have a great, I have like very long days. I have a big team. I have a lot of responsibility and I like love it. Um, because it's, the people are great and the work we're doing is really meaningful. When you first started working as a scientist, what surprised you about your work? I was surprised how much easier working was than college. Like I had a hard time, like I, I had a hard time in college. I had like discovered I had some learning disabilities and like worked through them while I was like, while I was in college and like college in and of itself was like, was academically like was was hard for me and um when i by the, like when i finished and i started working i was like oh like the work itself is like not like is like it's come so much more natural and is like so much more intuitive intuitively obvious for me than like doing well on exams what's the most exciting thing you've learned in the last year I've learned a lot about how I process information and also about how my colleagues process information. And I think it's made me a better communicator and it makes me, like helps me get me better prepared for meetings. I think I've become more aware in this like remote environment in particular, like how um, some people, some people learn by hearing and some people really learn by seeing and some people learn by doing. And that like I, when I'm, sharing information in a like in a big group and especially when we're working through something challenging and like and there's tension being able to talk about it and show it and share it like really helps bring everybody along and build consensus and like helps us like sort of like relieve the tension of the like whatever that problem is we're trying to solve what did you learn in science olympia that still helps you today well, I learned how to identify a whole lot of rocks and minerals and fossils, and that actually is useful. Like, I mean, like, continued to be, like, was, like, has been useful for a long time, and it's, like, been, it was useful at work, and, it was, like, it was useful in college, it was useful at work. Uh, it's useful when, you know, my friends and colleagues and, like, child bring me things to identify. Um, I, I actually think about the like write it do it event pretty frequently because it was like my first taste of technical writing and I think about it a lot when I'm like when my daughter and I are talking about like when she's you know is she like is doing like building things like following directions and Legos I think about it um, I think about it when we're when I'm when we're working on writing um, developing final plan sets and specifications for construction contracts and like as we're as we like talk as we talk through and think through how we display information to like write it into a contract and hand it to a contractor for construction and how we like how we um, how we talk talk about staging and sequencing of construction I actually do like reflect back on that experience of write it do it and how like what a good exercise that is for like at, for high school students for college students to like like 
think about how to write in, like write instructions that somebody else is going to have to follow and construct something. And like truly, like I, that is what we do. Like when we're building construction plans and specifications all the time, it's like right, like putting together the like how to of a like building a bridge and figuring out how to like how to convey all of the assumptions and all of the like all of the the expectations and limitations and like a in a plan like in a plan set of drawings as well as in like a written contract what do you like to do in your free time i'm a very like a voracious reader and like re reading definitely keeps me sane family likes getting out and exploring like getting out camping and um play ultimate frisbee like when like pandemic conditions allow and uh um and like and body allows so um those are probably like the like the big things i don't know like building Legos with my daughter um, or like doing like doing random art arts and construction projects with her a lot of a lot of time hanging out and a lot of time like as much time getting outside as can can pull off and last question for you what advice do you have for students interested in science I think like but but like read as like read like read as much as you can and just like get exposed to like as much of the like variety of science and like an engineering as you can like as you can um, as you can. I think the thing that is amazing about science careers is the like range of applications that they have. And I think that like when like when when we're students, we don't realize like how science like like how science touches like just about everything, and that it's not like that it isn't it isn't just work, it isn't just working in a lab um that there are like there, there's so many different applications and i think that the only way we really get exposed to all those applications is just to talk to people and like like ex get out and experience like ex experience the range to so, like go and like hear go to hear speakers like attend like like these days like virtual like like virtual presentations and um, ask questions like look people up and like reach, reach out to them and ask them if you can do informational interviews. Um, people like talking about themselves, they like talking about what they're passionate about. And so I think like the more scientists and like technologists and engineers you can talk to to get a feel for like all the different ways that science can be applied to like life outside of outside of school is really like valuable and important. Thank you so much for listening in this month, and we hope that you'll visit the Science Olympiad website for resources and educational materials to support a career path of your choice.